I'm not gonna be the guy that tells you Chainsaw Man's manga is better than the anime. No, I'm really not. That's that's not a joke. I'm not messing with you. And that's because we're here to take a look at the brand spanking new anime for Chainsaw Man, arguably one of the most anticipated adaptations in anime history. And how is it really compared to the source material? Does it elevate it like Demon Slayer or weigh it down like the lead blanket that is Promised Neverland Season 2? I swear I have never seen an anime trip fall down the stairs and break its neck like that one did. And speaking of anime, in the sphere, the studio behind a project means everything. The announcement that Madhouse or Studio Bones is undertaking a project is like getting a signed guarantee of excellence. You know whatever comes out of those production studios is going to be an absolute banger. MAPPA, on the other hand, is kind of the runt of the litter. It's a relatively new up-and-comer to the animation scene in Japan, being founded in 2012 by Masao Maruyama, one of the co-founders of Madhouse. This dude founded MAPPA at the ripe ball-dangling age of 70. And in recent years, there's been a ton of criticism of MAPPA, their scheduling, overworking their employees, and low pay culture. On top of that, their resume isn't nearly as exciting as some of their competitors. I'd say Jujutsu Kaisen is MAPPA's most notable and best project to date, which is definitely saying a lot because it is most excellent. However, they also picked up the final season of Attack on Titan, which, while not able to stack up to WIT Studios for a variety of legitimate reasons, most of which not being their fault, was still great, and now they have grabbed Vinland Saga Season 2. Honestly, they've kind of just been yoinking the leftovers WIT Studio drops, much to the disappointment of fans because WIT is nothing short of prolific. So how does a studio like MAPPA get chosen to create one of the most hyped up anime of the ever. There were surely other bids from other animation companies with much better track records for producing exceptional work, yet MAPPA got the gig. Well, what if I told you that Chainsaw Man is MAPPA's biggest gamble of all time? This show is going to literally make or break the company and possibly even propel MAPPA into the limelight of studios that we all hope to see on future releases. However, that all depends on how Chainsaw Man does over time. And it's doing well now, because of course it is, but we've barely scratched the surface of the series. Is MAPPA going to come to the table ready to propel itself to the forefront of the anime sphere, or will it end with an average anime that's attached to a beloved series? What? You thought I only knew about anime from 30 years ago? I'm hip, I stay with the times, okay? Just nihilistically, and usually prefer not to talk about it. But this, this is the Chainsaw Man anime. Let's get into it. Welcome to the first video of Shonember, our entire month where we cover the shonen anime we've completely neglected this year. If you want to support our theme months, join our community events like viewing parties, podcasts, fireside chats, and more, check out our Patreon. You joining us helps us not give a about YouTube's algorithm, lets us make what we want to make, which is what you want to see, and bring you unique videos on topics other channels literally can't do videos on. It also helps fund editors and lets us get out more content. Not only that, but it is an amazing community full of amazing people that are warm and welcoming and just want to hang out and talk about some anime or whatever the topic of the day is. Clapping cheeks, I don't know. So check it out and join the Patreon family. Let's get back to it. So let me take you back to May 18th, 2019, before the legendary episode, before the ninja tweet, before the flood of Twitter avatars that immediately out people as being awful. It was the day when I personally publicly said with complete confidence that Demon Slayer was going to be huge and nobody heard me. Yes, there was a time when you couldn't get a Demon Slayer video off the ground. I was too early and too right. The point is, despite my deliberate actions that contradict the statement, I know how trends, SEO, and multimedia advertising campaigns work all too well. I watched Demon Slayer and was instantly like, this is gonna be huge. Did I think it was gonna be the hugest? No. I don't think anyone could have seen what was coming with that series, but I do work in this industry and Demon Slayer had everything going for it. So what about Chainsaw Man? Well, first things first, let's go all the way to the start and talk about how anime gets made. Animation studios aren't the end all be all when it comes to anime production. In fact, they often hold very little fiscal responsibility 
on their projects. Most anime with some notable expectations are created and overseen by an entity called a production committee. Doesn't that sound fun, kids? This committee is made up of multiple businesses that are financing the project. For example, Jujutsu Kaisen's committee is made up of Toho, the television company, Shueisha, Jujutsu Kaisen's publishing company, Mappa Studios, Sumzap, a gaming company, and MBS, the Japanese broadcasting company. Together, all of these companies invested in Jujutsu Kaisen sharing in the initial risk of financing the project, but also the success once it became profitable. Can't you taste the sweet, sweet capitalism? However, these companies don't share the wealth equally. MAPPA is the third name on the list, meaning they invested less than Toho and Shueisha and will receive less royalties in return. That being said, I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen is the best-selling manga this year, like well over One Piece, so it's not like they aren't raking it in. And for the final Attack on Titan season, MAPPA was the fourth name listed in the production committee, meaning they are again responsible for less risk, but gain less as a result. It is incredibly rare for an animation studio to be the top name in a production committee because they often don't have the funds to offer that much financial backing. That, where the people at the top of the studio are looking at another yacht and don't care enough about putting out anime to push the purchase back a couple of months. Really, it's only massive studios like Toei or Team TMS Entertainment, whose CEOs already have all the yachts they could ever want, that can regularly lead committees for their shows. Because of that, animation studios don't get the bulk of the royalties from their productions, despite the fact that they, you know, made them. And for a long time, MAPPA wasn't on any of the production committees for their shows. They weren't willing to invest what little liquid capital they had, instead playing it safe and merely getting paid for their work as the animation studio regardless of royalties. And for those of you who may not understand royalties, royalties are where it's at. That's the money that keeps coming back, keeps coming in. Personally, I know some guys that made some music for a movie one time, and they still get like a couple hundred bucks every month. It's been 20 years. Anyway, the studio was more focused on the animation aspect than the financial aspect of their business, but little by little MAPPA has started putting some financing into their shows out of concern that they would be missing out on that sweet, sweet royalty payday. The studio started with small amounts, 5% to 10%, but as those investments turned into successes, MAPPA CEO Manabu Otsuka came to the conclusion that MAPPA should be investing as much as they can on any title they expect will hit big. This type of thinking actually came from looking at how American companies invest. Companies like Disney and Pixar have much more balance between the business and creative aspects, obviously leaning more towards business because this is f***ing America, dude. But those choices to invest big on titles they believed in, which is code for had optimal most common denominators, help these companies achieve resounding success worldwide. Japanese animation studios are not like that. They don't take massive risks. And that's what makes MAPPA getting chosen to create Chainsaw Man so insane. MAPPA went to Shueisha Publishing with this offer. Give us the rights to produce the Chainsaw Man anime adaptation and we will back it 100% no production committee, we will fund the whole thing. That is a massive, massive risk unlike anything MAPPA has ever done before, so Shueisha obviously took them up on it. This means that Shueisha bears very little risk on the show's success. It's all up to MAPPA. Honestly, it's likely that the only reason MAPPA even has the money to fully fund a project this big is the combined success of Jujutsu Kaisen in picking up Attack on Titan's final season. They're basically using the money from those shows as a springboard to potentially launch themselves into a massive success and a new era for the company. So MAPPA has put literally all of its eggs in the Chainsaw Man basket, making it the most important anime MAPPA has ever produced. Meanwhile, us plebby ass consumers have been sitting around being like, can we have the animes now please? So, a resounding success could launch MAPPA's finances through the roof, but if the show falls off or fans become unhappy with the adaptation, it could majorly impact the company's bottom line. And that is capitalism faux pas numero uno, mon frere. So you may be watching this and thinking, okay, so it's a potentially giant risk, but not really considering Chainsaw Man is a surefire hit. Well, maybe not. If you are not new to the channel, you likely have a bias on content that makes you feel like Chainsaw Man is a definite good to go gold hit. But when you look at the cold hard facts, the manga isn't and never has been 
a superstar. It currently has 18 million volumes in circulation, and that is a lot for only four years of being published, but nowhere near the top. Now, to be fair, it's a newer series, just like I said, and it just got an anime, and most, if not all of the best-selling manga have an anime adaptation, which propelled sales. But to make it into the substantially long list of top-selling manga, you gotta hit 20 million sales. To give you an idea of the disparity from the top to the bottom in that list, in seventh place is Slam Dunk, which has sold 170 million copies. At the top is One Piece, with over 500 million copies sold. And even a manga most of us hold in the highest regard, Berserk, has only sold 50 million, which is 5 million sales under Ranma half, and Berserk is still coming out and has more volumes than Ranma. Monster, a stellar manga with an anime, is close to the bottom, with a little over 20 million sales in 30 years. But most importantly, it is necessary to remember that Chainsaw Man does not have the widest appeal. It is violent, perverted, and dark. It is not family friendly, despite being a shonen. And this makes a massive impact when you start looking at numbers in the millions. While Chainsaw Man has a lot going for it, in this aspect, it has a lot going against it when you take in mass appeal factors. The series is culty, and when you have a fan base like that, it is incredibly easy to accidentally ignite their ire. So, given all these factors, you would expect MAPPA to be putting their most experienced personnel on the job, but that's not really what's happening. In fact, Chainsaw Man is the directorial debut of Ryo Nakayama. In an interview at Anime Expo 2022, Manabu Otsuka, the CEO, Hiroshi Seko, Chainsaw Man scriptwriter, and Makoto Kimura, the executive director, all sat down for an interview where they were asked why Ryu Nakayama was chosen for this role. Otsuka said that it's not just Ryu, but the entire team for Chainsaw Man is young and new. When they started creating the team, they wanted the team to match the age of the mangaka Tatsuki Fujimoto, who's <laughs> like a year or two younger than me, he's like 29 or 30, and most of the team working on Chainsaw Man is even younger than that. Only Otsuka, Seko, and Kimura are older. They're really hoping that the young energy of the team will help match the manga, but Otsuka does say that it's nerve-wracking because it's the team first time doing anything. This is a big deal. Chainsaw Man is incorporating newer technology. There's already been quite a bit of huff about the CGI in the show, and it's likely because a large portion of Chainsaw Man's fan base came from a more berserk-oriented realm, and we all know how the CGI Berserk 2016 turned out. But you should ask yourself why it turned out that way. And the reason, well, one of the reasons, is because of a director completely inexperienced with CGI. This is the person helping with shot composition, action, I mean, everything. They direct everything. If the director doesn't know what they're doing or doesn't have the right vision, you're doomed. So altogether we have MAPPA not only taking a massive risk in independently financing Chainsaw Man, but also using a bunch of green animators and a brand new director to do it. It's incredibly risky, and you can't help but wonder, why? Why put so much risk on this one anime? I mean, if you blow it, the fanbase is gonna crucify you. Well, remember when I said that MAPPA approached Shueisha Publishing to make Chainsaw Man? That's not the normal way these things happen. Usually, it's the publisher that chooses the animation studio, not the other way around. MAPPA Studios had so many fans of the manga in-house that they began to drop a proposal for Shueisha that included the visual art, the creative direction they wanted to take, and the financial aspect of MAPPA funding the entire thing. Shueisha agreed to it, and that's how MAPPA got the green light for Chainsaw Man, when it's very possible Shueisha would have picked another company had they begun searching independently. But you know what? I kind of love that. It shows a passion and dedication to the project before they were even hired to work on it. And I expect it's another reason why the production team is so young. Many of the animators are also fans of the manga and are passionate about creating the best possible anime adaptation they can. It also keeps the brass out of the guillotines, right? If the project fails, it's because of the young upstarts not being good enough. Their careers will swiftly end, and the people at the top will divide what's left and go make money somewhere else. So all this leads back to my very first statement in the video. I'm not going to be the guy that tells you Chainsaw Man's manga is better than the anime, which was a lie, because it is. And, and that's the point. MAPPA is putting everything on the line for this anime. It's the biggest risk the studio has ever taken. The question is, is it working? 
Did they make the right decisions? And right now, it's kind of hard to say. There is certainly buzz. The OP was one of the most viewed OPs of all time on YouTube, like within the first day of it dropping. But there's only four episodes out currently, and I'm watching every episode as it's released, and I like the anime. I think it looks good, not anywhere near Demon Slayer or even Jujutsu Kaisen, but good. I think the voice acting is good. I'm enjoying it overall, but am I getting absolutely blown away by it? Not yet. It doesn't feel like an instant classic to me like Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, or Jujutsu Kaisen did. The only thing that really, really got me so far is the second ED, Time Left by Zutumeo. That bass kicks ass. <laughs> But, am I biased because I read the manga? Yes. Does anime have a wider appeal than manga? Yes. But just like YouTube subscribers are our core fan base, manga readers are the same for an anime. They're the ones who get on the anime ride first, and the ones who light fires if they get off. Chainsaw Man is a series that hangs in the delicate balance of the manga reader's reactions. Because it doesn't have that spy family mass appeal, it needs the core fan base to hype it up, not decry it as a low effort cash grab. Not that they are, but one misstep and it's over for MAPPA. Now I like to do something I call the Devon test with New Shonen, which is watching the anime with my fiance to see how she reacts. And she liked Chainsaw Man and wants to watch more, but her reaction was not on par with Demon Slayer or even Dr. Stone. Episode one was slow. It even felt slow for me. Denji is not cute like Tanjiro or instantly likable like Yuji Itadori. She was upset about Puchita not really uh, sticking around. She laughed at Denji taking a dump. She didn't laugh at Denji kicking Aki in the nuts. However, she did get reinvested when Power showed up. She had no previous investment in the series, but has heard about it and was interested. I use her reactions to gauge average viewer reactions. And I would give her reaction a good medium. But how do I feel about the show? Well, the opening kicks ass. I'm enjoying the different EDs for every episode as well, but there's something a little off about the series so far, and I can't quite put my finger on it. The color palette is not what I expected. It's muted, not dark and grim, and not the vibrant neon rainbow barf we got on the awesome covers of the manga, and I expected one or the other, and we landed in the middle, muted. The reds are dark, the purples are dark, it has a weird, almost sepiatic feel, which I don't think is a great place for this series specifically. Part of what made Chainsaw Man great is its color, whether literally on the covers or in its humor. Denji is a piece of trash. He comes off as an idiotic force of nature in the manga and the jokes hit really hard. And so far, I found the overall moody tone of the anime hindering to the humor. The tone from the color palette and the voice direction make the jokes seem kind of out of place and instead of funny, just kind of weird. Some of the jokes hit, some fall really, really flat. The conversations are slow and atmospheric where they came off as more chaotic in the source material. It seems like the team is going for an edgier vibe all around, which just wasn't what I expected. It's not what I felt from the manga. It's not like Chainsaw Man isn't already edgy in and of itself, but the levity is really what made it for me and so far the anime has not delivered. Maybe they just made Denji seem more gross than he came off in the manga, which is saying a lot, I really don't know. There is also the CGI, like I mentioned before, which doesn't bother me as much as some people and bothers me more than others. My issue with it revolves around the way it takes me out of the show occasionally. It's so contrasted with everything around it that I lose focus and get stuck on this weirdly moving chainsaw man who's being animated completely differently than everything else around him, sometimes even at a different frame rate. Then all of a sudden he doesn't look CGI anymore. It's a strange choice that's being executed strangely. And CGI can be done really well, Demon Slayer proves that, I mean most people don't even know that that show is CGI. Beastars as well was great, and the Berserk Golden Age trilogy had some excellent CGI in it. This may be something that simply takes the team time to nail down, but there's also pacing issues. When episode 1 came out, and it was entirely the first chapter, I was like, oh, they're really gonna draw the series out, that's kinda cool. But by the end of episode three, we're eight chapters into a series that just dropped its 109th. And while it does seem to be adhering to the manga faithfully, 
it still feels slow somehow. I'm not entirely sure why, but again, I think it's the tone and the voice direction. It's been a bit dramatic so far. Episode 3 had the fight with the bat demon, but when the action kicked in, there was only 3 minutes left. The majority of the episode focused on power and that's fine, but episode 2 was also a little slow, focusing on setup and only giving a tiny bit of action at the end, which was also how episode 1 went too. Then we got episode 4, which was much more of what I was looking forward to. It started off with a solid 10 minutes of action and humor. It was the first really good episode I had seen yet, which gives me a lot of hope. That being said, having 3 okay episodes as an opener isn't great. In 2022, when the majority of people can barely get through a TikTok, you need to grab them by the balls in the first 10 seconds and never let go. It's especially bad when there was a lot of quiet talking and I'd look over at Devin and her eyes were glazed over with mild boredom. The fun thing is that None of what I'm saying here really matters in the big scheme of things. We've already got people talking about how Chainsaw Man is going to be anime of the year, and it definitely could be whether it's off its own merits or not. Demon Slayer keeps winning awards despite the story being okay, but I can look at a show I'm going to watch one way or another as objectively as possible like I've done here, and it won't make much of a difference because I'm critical. Most people are not. While I think the show is good and has the right attitude behind it, which I think is the most important thing, I think there's a lot of room for improvement as well. Most people won't bother to think about that. The first season is going to be 12 episodes long, and judging by the OP, I can guess how far it's going to get into the story, but there will undoubtedly be a season 2 and possibly even 3, depending on how hard they stretch or how much they burn through in this first season. My hope is that the team learns throughout season one and comes back in season two really ready to take it up a notch or even that season one is a perpetual ramp up that just gets better and better i'm not entirely sure how production works i assume they start with episode one and then go incrementally till the end but I, I don't know they could start with episode five then go back to three and then do seven and then do one i really i don't know but i want to make it clear that i really want to see this anime kill it because this is the kind of content I want. Chainsaw Man is the kind of content I want, and that's why it's good to be critical of its flaws instead of just whipping out the old 10 out of 10 best anime ever, let's go. Creators need feedback. Shills need an echo chamber. As it stands four episodes in, Chainsaw Man has an all right start. The crew is new, the voice talent is new, and the internet hype train is still chugging hard. And let's be honest, 99% of people will see that something is cool online and just start repeating it without a second thought. Now, it could be wrong. Maybe some of the stuff coming up will change my mind. But right now, as it is, I see Chainsaw Man as a good anime. I think they'll make their money, but it won't be life-changing for the studio like Jujutsu Kaisen was. And the anime won't be made into binders and backpacks like Demon Slayer. For comparison's sake, let's take a look at another studio that is really putting their all into their biggest IP, the one I just spoke of, UFO Table. I don't care whether you think Demon Slayer is good or not, and frankly, I'm sick of it myself. I've watched the show, I've read and owned the manga, but I can tell you without question that the show elevates the manga story to a new level. It is a different experience, and it has boosted Demon Slayer into the highest realms of success an anime can reach, which has also elevated the pretty weak manga into ninth place in best-selling manga of all time, with over 150 million volumes sold in six years. It's sold better than Bleach has in its entirety. Bleach, one of the big three that's been out for like 20 years. But the difference is, is that Demon Slayer wasn't hyped like Chainsaw Man was. And hype can be a double-edged sword. If expectations are too high, it can make a good anime seem shitty. Just like if expectations are low, it can make a good anime seem awesome. But so far, the anime isn't elevating the story or bringing it to life in a way that the manga didn't. It's not bringing something new to the table yet, it's just telling the same story, and maybe not even telling it as good. Now, that could say more about Fujimoto's incredible ability to make manga than anything else, but to me, MAPPA is falling short right now. I think they have an amazing opportunity to take a pretty surefire hit and create something that people will be talking about for years, to promote themselves to the forefront of animation studios people want to see adaptations from, but instead, right now, what we're getting is a good adaptation that does the job but doesn't evoke that feeling that wows the viewer. The fights are good, but they aren't 
unreal. What we're getting is a solid MAPPA show, but nothing exceptional other than it's Chainsaw Man and we want to see that. The series is up against stiff competition this year. Demon Slayer Season 2, Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 2, Ranking of Kings, Mob Psycho Season 3, Stone Ocean, Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, Yurase Yatsura. If you want to stand out in 2022, you really need to be doing something exceptional, and I'm just not seeing that yet, and honestly, it's disappointing. I love Chainsaw Man. I want it to be the best anime it can be. I want it to be the best anime ever. I just don't think we're getting that yet, but I still have hope. And hey, this is just my opinion, right? I've seen plenty of people doing the old 10 out of 10, and they were doing that episode one. And in the end, I'm just a grumpy bastard with high hopes that we can get more successful dark seinen-esque content coming our way in the future. Chainsaw Man is a test for that, and I hope in the end, it passes. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I would just like to give a special shout out to our lucky patron of the week, Jetfire, and our high tier patron of the week, Calamity Cookie. Guys, make sure that you check out our other videos before you subscribe. We also have another Chainsaw Man video that goes very much in depth into the series. I think you'd like that. My name's Mike. This is Bonsai Pop, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.